I'm here with Troy Hunt, and uh, today we're talking about, well, a little service that has grown to be enormous. Oh, yes. um, have I been pwned, and how, well, the Azure side of thing, really. Um, so, first question, how does it work? <laughs> <laughs> so, I just finished this talk, and I'm, I'm like equal parts, like, hot and sweaty and buzzy because you know it's always nice doing talks yeah. uh, and in the talk actually I showed the Alexa stats and, and suddenly as of the last month it's now like the 5,300th largest website in the world apparently which is which is cool for something you do in your spare time yeah. but look it's, it's a data breach aggregation website so when there are data breaches like LinkedIn Dropbox this sort of thing yep. uh, data gets taken from systems spread out all over the web I aggregate it and I make it searchable so you can go there and say, you know, literally, have I been pwned? Has my email address been in a data breach? And if you're like me, it'll come back and say, yes, yeah, here's a lot of them. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> yeah, it's a really cool service. So it'll be in the link below if you, uh, if you want to go and check it out. Now, I'm really interested in the whole Azure side behind it because I know initially you build it on sort of a PaaS system or IaaS system. No pass system, and now yes. you kind of moved it to serverless, right? Yeah. So, so this was really the talk I just did, which was um, if we go back to late 2013, which is mm -hmm. when I built it originally, I put it on the Azure App Service, uh, which is effectively platform as a service. It had, still has, really really cool things like scale out. It's like, hey, you're using more than 50% of your CPU over a period of five minutes. You might need another instance. We'll give you another one. Yeah. And that was a really cool way of sort of scaling in response to demand, and then it would scale back in as the demand tapered back off. Yep. So why serverless? Like, what, what is the benefit you get from functions now? So, uh, you know, one, one of the interesting things is that w with PaaS, it's like you have a container, and, and your yeah. container has this many CPUs and this, many, uh, this much RAM and all this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And then you start to fill the container up, and you get to a threshold, and it says you need another container. And, and the problem with that is that it, it's almost a little bit like the problem that we were trying to solve in the first place by having PaaS, which is that... In the on-prem days, you would buy a server and you had to buy a fixed unit size yep. and you were always under-utilizing it, so you are paying for stuff you didn't need, Correct. or you were over-utilizing it and you didn't have enough. Yeah. And that was always sort of inefficient and either you couldn't serve the traffic or you were paying too much money. So with PaaS, it's a little bit the same except that you can keep fixing it on the fly. Uh -huh. When we go to serverless, you've always got just the right amount. It's the Goldilocks principle, right? Yeah, totally. Never too much, never too little, just the right amount. And then yeah. you just pay every single time it executes, and then you pay for how efficiently it executes. Yeah. And, and you just get away from the idea of having these boxes that you need to kind of fill. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. I mean, all of our platform at Cloudgrow is built on serverless as well. So it's, it just makes sense in the same, well, billing, but also efficiency. Um, so I, I had this thought that uh, Have We Been Pwned is full of data that you've collected from other data breaches. Uh, which kind of makes it a target for people that would like that data, I would imagine. So what are some of the security features that you've used in Azure or otherwise to kind of prevent all that? It, it's funny, actually, because my, <laughs> in my naivety, <laughs> I, was, I was sort of thinking, ah, uh, it's all data which is sort of out there to varying degrees anyway. I mean, if, if you want LinkedIn, you, you, you literally do a search and you find it and you right. download. I'm, I'm not saying go and do this, just <laughs> hypoth hypothetically. And, and the point there is, let's say it's LinkedIn and there's 160 million records or something. Yeah. Why would you bother to keep hitting Have I Been Pwned as opposed to just going and getting that? Sure. Uh, so, yeah, that, that was, as I said, in my naivety, it, it turns out that there are cases where people try to enumerate large volumes of records. So, yeah, I sort of very early on, I, I said, okay, well, I've got to start doing things like adding rate limits. Mm -hmm. um, so, in code, in the, in the Azure uh, web API on platform as a service, I, I literally was starting to return 429, too many requests, right. if the IP came in and made too many requests within a short period of time. And, and that, that kind of worked for a little bit. And, and also in my naivety, I learn a lot by making mistakes. <laughs> in, <laughs> in my naivety, I thought, oh, someone will get a 429 and they'll slow down. No. Nah. <laughs> so one of the things I did a few years ago now is when I saw that pattern, I, I eventually ended up putting Cloudflare around it and now I do all the rate limiting everything at Cloudflare. Yep. And the cool thing about that is that yeah, what Cloudflare does well is controls all that sort of traffic flow. What Azure does well is serves APIs. And when, when each one just does what they do well, mm -hmm. they work really well and they don't sort of cross pollute. Yeah, no, that's cool. There's, there's a lot of things that you need to do in Azure. It doesn't always just come for free uh, in order to make it secure. We were talking about earlier with Emmy Brady and uh, Tanya Junker about security on the platform and how 
you have to do stuff yourself, right? It doesn't just come for free. It, it's a little bit of both in, in terms of security on, on the Azure platform. So there's definitely stuff you get implicitly. And a, a really good example of that is that if you have an app service yep. and you provision websites on them, that they are well and truly sandbox. Like you mm -hmm. don't have to think about how do I make sure they run in different processes sure. and things like that. Microsoft will do that for you. And, and you know, that's, that's great. That's almost like the abstraction that we want from cloud. Mm -hmm. But then in terms of things like, you know, one of the good examples is people say, well, don't you get automatic DDoS protection? Well, it, it depends. Like level four network stack stuff, y yes, maybe. Yeah. But level seven, I'm just going to send like massive HTTP requests on the, on the app layer. Well, well, no, you've got to figure out how to yeah. deal with that. Yeah, it's interesting. All right, well, that's a little bit of an insight into how I've been pwned. And uh, go check it out because it's a really good service, actually. And it's, it's, uh, it's free. Yeah, yeah. So you go there, you plug your email address in for free. You can uh, you can ask to be notified if you're in a data breach oh, in the yeah. future. There's about two and a half million people signed up for that. You can search your domain for free, so long as you can demonstrate that you can control the domain. If you're like acmecore.com, you mm -hmm. can just go and do a search for everything on acmecore.com. That's really cool. So check it out. Thanks a lot, Troy. Cheers, mate.